check this. this is the hard knock life, but not the chicka kind More like the people in the world seeking perspectives with a different life The kids who share the interest together with a similar kind When they said John Glover for Spider-Man, they didn't mind Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, Nerds of Color Reading Lounge here at Control-Alt uh, Hey everybody Hey I, I'm Keith, I'm your, one of your hosts here, Betsy Huang is somewhere roaming around as well We are here uh, co-hosting this uh the space where people can come, read books, and listen to uh, authors talk about their process. And one of those authors we are lucky enough to have with us right here. This is uh, Brian Tao Hor, who actually wrote one of the fan fiction pieces that you see on the wall. So please welcome Brian to the Reading Lounge. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming out, especially on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, and you're not really welcoming, Brian, because you've been, like, hanging out here for the last three days anyway. Right. right. Um, so... Well, how has your control alt experience been? Well, so far I've really enjoyed it. This has been a fantastic opportunity. I'm really grateful to the Smithsonian Asian Pacific American Center for um, putting in so much hard work to make a um, gathering like this possible. When you're talking about 40 different artists yeah, from so many one. diverse fields of, um, of knowledge and experience here, I think that you know, we're seeing some really transformative works you know, that are made possible. That you know, even just looking at you know, some of the ways you know, my fellow artists are approaching things, I feel like you know, I'm going to um, walk out of here strengthened in my own art and my own sense of purpose and the directions that we can take things in the future. And I hope that goes for many of the other um, people who are coming here either for the first time or you know, just as a starting exposure to people. Yeah. So one of the, and for those of you who are new mm -hmm. to, the, to the Reading Lounge, behind us are a series of uh, works by writers such as Brian and comic artists where they've taken uh, iconic characters or scenes from science fiction, from fantasy, from superheroes, from comics, anything iconic and, and recontextualizing it through the lens of uh, marginalized communities, people of color. Can you talk about what your piece is about and what lens you took with it? All right, sure. Um, now, as a little bit of a background, I'm a Lao American writer and I'm one of the um, first Lao American writers for my generation. And you know, coming in, um, working with the refugee experience and working within the diaspora, most of us came to the country in the aftermath of the um, Lao Civil War, in the, in, uh, which ended in 1975. And so for those of us in our formative years, were the 1980s, and that meant that we got exposed to a lot of the um, classic um, moments in pop culture, but very few examples of Asian Americans in really positive or constructive roles in society. You had you know, Bruce Lee in his roles, it's like, you know, you had Lon Duck Don, you had all these um, characters where as an Asian American male, it wasn't really, um, you know, it wasn't a rich territory to look into. <laughs> so when you guys gave me the um, question of um, what are your um, iconic moments that you recall, um, I wound up turning to um, creating the piece to archaeologist dream of electric sheep which was inspired frankly by two of the, uh, by two of the films which kind of for me polarized our experience which was um, the classic film Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom which presented you know, the lovable and cute urchin sidekick of short round <laughs> and you also had Blade Runner um, with um, Harrison Ford and so I thought okay well that's pretty cool it's like you have that movi movement between Harrison Ford, the archaeologist, and Harrison Ford, the robot possible replicant hunting down his Spoil fellow robots. Spoiler alert. Oops. Yeah, that's right. It's like you know, 30 years. <laughs> but we, we don't know that he's a replicant. We don't know, but we have, it's like, you know, everyone's always trying to do that you know, big guess. And so um, looking at that, it was always a question of growing up, like, you know, how, as an Asian American male, what, it's like, you know, um, what are the things that you got referred to? Um, what are um, your other classmates always looking at you as? And um, what it's like, you know, I think you and I had very similar experiences where, you know, it's like, okay, you got compared to Bruce Lee or you got compared to um, Kane from Kung Fu and the Young <laughs> Grasshopper. It's like, you know, if you had an older you know, gentleman, you might get referred to as number one son. Right, and, right. And all these things. And so, you know, I wanted to see whatever happened to Short Round and what if, it's like, you know, where does an Asian American boy like that? Um, grow up and become and try to see if we can you know, run that. And I think that's also largely been part of my um, literary process as well you know, since then you know, in my own poetry and in my right. own writing is taking these elements of you know, the popular culture that we're surrounded with and reframing them, repurposing them to find something 
you know, that's usable. And to put that into context, it would be when we were growing up in the, um, in the latter part of the 20th century, there wasn't a lot of Asian American literature um, which you know, presented an Asian American you know, voice you know, for men. Um, right. Or at least that's enough a way that I, I came into it. You know? And so you know, the thing is, is that when you're coming from Laos, this is a country where almost no one has heard of it. Even though Laos is the size of Great Britain, for example, you know, it's a country that you know, almost no one had heard of. And so everyone was saying, well, what is the Lao literature going to be like? What are those Lao stories going to be like? And, you know, and I was looking at it, and I, I, I hit that point where I said, we've got to put the brakes on this, that you know, if we keep writing our stories the way people expect us to write the stories, it's just going to read like um, Vietnam War stories light, Cambodian killing field sure. stories light. And, and you know, my thought, you know, that's going to lock us into this narrative track that, you know, I don't know, I, I would consider it a trap. And so, so you know, th that's actually a really interesting point because I think, you know, when you hear or think about what constitutes Asian American mm -hmm. literature, Asian American media, mm -hmm. you're, as you're saying, Lao American is not necessarily at the forefront. Mm -hmm. what, what experiences or what stories have yet to be told that should be explored from that experience or or not i mean are there things like you said no. is it is it too uh is it is it too much of like a rhetorical trap maybe to think about mm -hmm. what you know an identity in that sense right well i think the um question is is to me the Lao experience has always been a bit of a quantum experience that um, you know like, or like schrodinger's cat you know <laughs> been like where you've got that cat in the box and until right. you open the box is it alive or dead the problem right. is is that the Lao history has been for the most part, this case of you can either track it back 600 years or you can track it back to when it was recognized by the United Nations in 1954. And so it's this question of how long has our country been around? Where do we trace our roots? How do we understand our identity? And this has been creating this um, strange sense of diaspora. And because of the geographic location that Laos was in, this is a um, diaspora culture that you know, interacted with many, many other cultures. You're talking about you know, the presence of the French for many years, the Russians, the Japanese, the Thai, the Vietnamese, the Cambodians, you know, Americans running back and forth then, even as the question is, is that you know, we've passed on these traditions from generation to generation, you know, and we had plenty of opportunities to say, we're not Lao, and yet you know, we still you know, carry forward you know, the idea then, but in our modern culture, that's become a real abstract issue. You always have the elder who says, I want you to preserve the traditions. I always want you to remember your culture. And then it's like, okay, well, what is that culture? And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, oh, you just go talk to Vermont, go talk to someone else. And, they, um, and so this has been a very frustrating process. And the question for us, you know, when we were doing books like you know, the monstra or on the other side of the eye was can you create something that you know, speaks to the next generation and as we're doing that I guess it was that you didn't want to create those stereotype books you, know, you didn't want to um, just um, say all right the only thing you kids can write is memoirs and your children's folk stories Ben it's like and I thought that you know, going in the direction of science fiction created a new direction. Yeah, and I actually, I, I like that. I li and I like that segue because I think, you know, when you think of Asian American literature, mm -hmm. they are immigrant stories. Why isn't mm -hmm. speculative fiction a, a, a greater part of, like, the Asian American uh, oeuvre? Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, I, I wouldn't know how to say that, except that you know, when I'm usually talking to my students, I always express it in the idea that... For our culture and for our community to continue Can and to you go forward. Oh, yeah. For our culture and our community to move forward, we also have to be able to express a future that we see ourselves in. And that means that we have to you know, break away from the traditional languages, the traditional dialogues that we use. If we just simply relied on the language that our former colonizers used, our former um, imperial um, elements used on us, then we would always see ourselves as the, the traditional language used to describe us. Even, um, even a few months ago, when President Obama visited Laos for the first time, we kept seeing Laos is a quiet, peaceful <laughs> um, country. It's a tiny, little, pristine Eden. And I'm going, for 300 years, we've been locked in a civil war. We've been trying to um, 
it's like, you know, we have a tradition that we all say we love peace, but um, if you really look at it, it's civil wars, it's um, conflict, it's invasions. It's like, this doesn't seem to me like um, a quiet, peaceful <laughs> kingdom here. Or at least it's, it, it, we would need to redefine that. Yeah. And I also love that in, in your work, um, your work is also diverse in the sense you write fiction, but you also write poetry. What is, mm -hmm. what is science fiction poetry? Well, science fiction poetry is one, is a um, form of poetry that's actually kind of getting, it's like, you know, I get a lot of strange looks at, about it sometimes, but I think you all need to realize that it actually goes back to all of our traditions, Ben, especially in Asia, um, that you have traditions such as the Ramayana uh, from the Hindu epics, you have the Greek traditions of Homer, um, you have Beowulf, you have you know, works like um, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, and, mm. and so on, and even um, the Jabberwocky. You have you know, this deep tradition of poetry that um, explores and captures the expressive and the imaginative, and yet, you know, you know modern literature t um, tends to shy away from that. But I think you know, what intrigued me about getting involved with science fiction poetry then was, you know, what is it possible to explore? Where, it's like, this is the new territory you know, that we can carve out for ourselves. You look at um, Kathy um, Park Horn's book, you know, Dance, Dance, Revolution, for example, which is this great book of poetry that um, is set in a post-apocalyptic you know, new Las Vegas. And you have this guide who's um, basically speaking in an equivalent of city speak from Blade Runner, <laughs> trying to guide you through this history of the Korean experience and of the Asian American experience. And yet at the same time, we're using this lens of using the future to talk about the past. Right. Directors, comments and the lectures Fanboys, professional artists and professors Maybe a nerd who's just like you Talking about the things that you like too So I invite you to the NOC In full color you see